Living at the highest level with Dat Lee. This is episode seven of Living at the Highest Level. You're here with Dat Lee, and today I'm here with um, one of my best friends, someone I worked with, someone I respect, Mr. Chris Wong, and we are here in uh, Natchang in Vietnam for the holidays. Traveling for some business, uh, some life experience, and just for having some fun. Chris, what's going on? Yo. Yo, the weather outside is freaking amazing. You know, like uh, as we're driving here, I checked the um, Google weather. It said it was going to rain for the next five days, but no. It's amazing outside. Um, yeah, you can never really trust the Google weather or um, Apple weather. It, you know, no one really knows what's happening in, in the uh, in the world regarding weather. It's just a forecast, Chris. So don't even worry about that, bro. And today, what we're here to talk about is fuck New Year's resolutions. You don't need it. It is a recipe for disaster. It's just an excuse for people to uh, try to reinvent themselves and fail. What you really need are epic goals. Goals that you actually want to achieve that are fun that are actual measurable, and we'll go into why people don't really fail. But Chris, what's your thoughts on uh, New Year resolutions? And today is the 29th of December, so we still have a few days left before people decide to uh, make their New Year's resolution, and we're here to tell you not to. My thought on this is a lot of people try to have a restart every single year, but uh, you know why would you wait till wait like 30 days, you know, 60 days, a half a year in order to start something new, right? Why don't you just do it now? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's, it's like, oh, New Year's is just a reset for everyone. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, make a new goal for the year. And then after two weeks, they just pretty much forget about it. It's, uh, it's one of the funny things. Um, anyone that works out at a gym, you see a huge influx of people for the first two weeks. And uh, I was reading some articles online that they, they say that the first two weeks of New Year's, everyone is just feeling good. They're on track for their goals. They, they think they're going to make it and all life is good. But then after those two weeks, everyone fades, Chris. Um, that's because they don't really create the, the habits that are required to follow through and, and create change in their lives. They just kind of try to reinvent themselves in, in such a big way that doesn't really last long term. And um, you, you see a lot of it on social media, especially on Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat, where people be like, I'm at the gym, or, oh, I'm dieting. And then post, uh, post two weeks, it's all gone. Chris, what are your thoughts? Yes, I completely agree with you. And also, uh, I shall also add that... Um you know, like people say, oh, I'm going to start like, you know, in, in 30 days, 60 days, I'm going to start a new regime, right? But it's just uh, an excuse for themselves to to slack off for another 30 days, you know, 60 days. And uh, I, I don't think it's the right mentality to go after things you really, really want in life. Yeah, like, I mean, you have to make a conscious choice every single day. And uh, I was reading a Forbes article that they say only 8% of people actually accomplish their goals. And these 8% of the people, they, they make SMART goals. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So what, what are SMART goals? They are goals that are specific. Um, they're measurable. It's attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Um, so they make it small enough, like, for example, instead of saying, I'm going to quit smoking. That's so vague and so big versus saying something like, I'm going to stop smoking uh, the first cigarette during breakfast. So maybe you'll smoke your first cigarette at lunch going forward for the first month. So that's actionable. It's specific. Uh, you, know, you can measure yourself, and it's time-bound, right, versus I'm just going to quit smoking. It's, it's too big of a achievement to try to just say, yeah, I'm just going to quit smoking. And Chris, actually, you can touch on this because you've been uh, you know, smoking here and there, and, and the habit is pretty strong for you. So you know, touch on that. 
I I would say the habit is pretty strong for me. You know, I usually just do it for pleasure. You know, I I understand the benefits and the disadvantages, and uh, in my mind, I I'm justified. You know, to have a few smokes here and there during my trip, and um, but well, you know, like just to go back to, you know, setting small actionable steps, it, it gives you confidence when you achieve these uh, little victories. You know, like. Accumulation of like small victories lead to a bigger victory. Yeah, and uh, I think the biggest thing for New Year's resolutions is uh, willpower. I think people don't really develop enough willpower to sustain the actual change for themselves. And I'm reading this uh, article online where they talk about the uh, prefrontal uh, cortex of your brain. So that is the area of your brain that's right behind your forehead which is responsible for handling short-term uh, memory and solving abstract uh, tasks. Um, and this area of your brain is really responsible for the willpower um, that you have for activities, um, choices in life, and, and just how you know, some of your decisions are made. And the reason why a lot of these um, New Year resolutions fail is because people don't develop the willpower because it's like a muscle, you have to develop it, you have to train it, you have to nourish it in order for it to actually function and and build into a stronger muscle that you can you know use to to do heavy lifting as an example from uh, the gym so simply it's just too overwhelming of willpower needed uh, in your prefrontal cortex so that's why according to this uh, online article that's why it, it doesn't work because it's just too much for your brain to handle. And, and it's true. And, you know, I was recommended this book, The uh, the Power of Habit. And it really talks about, you know, why habits form, um, some of the, the signals, the actions, the rewards that people get from um, their habits that they built and why it's so hard to, to really um, change those habits. Like for people that are smoking, it, it's more than just smoking the actual cigarette. It, it's part of, their daily routine. It's part of uh, how their body moves in certain uh, social interactions. Like that's why you see so many people just have a smoke uh, after the club or just before they go out because it's it's more of a social uh, part of their lives now, and it's just ingrained in them. So, Chris, uh, how true is that? It is. You know, in the beginning, uh, I, I think everybody has some sort of agenda to start a certain habit, right? It, it wouldn't be a habit to, you know, in the beginning, but let's just say smoking, you know. I, I started smoking because I thought it was cool, right? And uh, and I actually quite enjoy the taste. And, and that has become, over time, there are triggers in my life, let's just say drinking and going out clubbing. I've been conditioned to, you know, pull out smoke, light a cigarette, and really like socialize with everybody. So it's not just the aspect of just, you know, smoking and getting the nicotine in your lungs and like the feeling of uh, inhale and exhaling smokes. It's part of a bigger picture. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's pretty crazy how many people smoke out there, hey? But again, it's just uh, the way your, your brain works. It's just that, that reward, right? Once you get that hit of nicotine, it's just like, ah. And that, that's pretty uh, pretty accurate for the most part it's, it's crazy like uh, even for me sometimes like you know once in a while I, I enjoy eating a uh, soft ice cream at McDonald's and like all of a sudden I'll just get this signal out of nowhere like the urge to like have um, ice cream and then like subconsciously I'll, I'll be in my car just driving to the drive through and then when I eat the ice cream I'm like oh, it's so good but then after like 10 minutes I'm like shit <laughs> <laughs> right, because the, the first thing is always like the signal or the cue to, to take that action, and then when you're kind of already in that action, it's so hard to uh, to stop already because you're like halfway there, and then once you take that hit or that lick of ice cream, it's like game over. That's your reward, and like really, that that's uh, those are the three fundamentals of you know some of the habits that form and why people do the things they do, but. Check out the uh, the book, The Power Habit. It's you know, I definitely recommend reading it, especially if you're trying to make some uh, changes in 2016. And what I want people to really uh, do this year is don't just have you know smart goals. Anyone can kind of write like something specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, or time bound. Have something epic. Have epic goals in your lives that you actually enjoy doing. Um, you actually make it 
announced to like a partner for accountability uh, because it's so important. It's so important to have someone that um, holds you accountable. And, you know, Chris has been an amazing um, accountability partner for going to the gym at 6 in the morning. And sometimes when I don't really feel like going to the gym, I don't want to lose face or look like a, a you know, <laughs> I don't want to look like a little bitch because, you know, I didn't wake up in time and he went well with me. So, you know, having an accountability partner is huge. And, and we'll touch more about this uh, in a little bit with Chris here and invest in yourself. It doesn't just have to be invest money, invest your time, your energy, um, committing to, to your goals. Write it down. People don't even have a journal to write down their goals or some of the, uh, the steps they're taking to, to change their lives. And the last one is change your routine. How do you expect to, to change some of these habits if you don't adjust your routine or you don't adjust your lifestyle? And uh, Chris, what do, you talk, what do you think about that? Absolutely. Um, there is a very big reason why we chose to, uh, you know, wake up at six in the morning. And uh, due to a lot of studies, you know, we found that a lot of successful people, you know, actually wake up very early and uh, sleep rather late, you know, so they don't sleep that much, really. But, um, you know, like as a part of a routine, there's always that one habit that uh, is what they call a keystone habit. Once you have that, everything else sort of kind of follows along. And honestly, sometimes it's, it's just as hard as the first day you started, but your goals have to be big enough that you're willing to, to get up every single day early or you're willing to stop smoking and stop getting that, that hit um, of whatever it is that you're, you're taking. And it just it has to be worth it. Uh, and we really talk about having a, a lifestyle that's that's worth you know doing it for like honestly if you're staying at home no one is going to uh to know who you are or really care right get out there and um in 2015 i've done a lot of traveling it's kind of crazy how we ended up back here chris uh in asia because we started pretty much 2016 i mean 15 in uh where were we in taiwan right Taipei 101? That's right. Yeah, so we were in Taipei 101 uh, you know, last year at this time, and then we spent New Year's Eve there, and then we went back to, uh, back to Canada what, on like the 5th or the 6th. I stayed behind. Oh, yeah, Chris, was <laughs> Chris stayed back for like another two, three weeks, but um, I went back and went straight back to work and just uh, getting everything, you know, hustling and everything just back in the routine and... It's crazy how fast one year goes by. 365 days just, you know, elapses so quickly, especially when you're keeping busy. Yeah. Um, when you have your mind set on something, you know, like there's one thing that I'm really proud of that, right, is over the past year and a half, I've seen how hard he worked for, you know, some of his goals. I have seen how he stuck to his, uh, his plans, how he's always been like journaling, figuring out what his next step is, you know. And uh, most important part is he actually followed through. And uh, I'm really, really honored and inspired to, to be working alongside with him. Uh, shout out to one Sir Richard Hoy uh, for his key phrase, create a plan, have a plan, work your plan. Create a plan, <laughs> work your plan, have a plan. It's, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from Richard Hoy, and it's, it's true. Have a goal, create a plan, and just follow your plan. And I think people make it way too complex a lot of times, uh, and they just try to search for something that's always easier. It's sometimes just the hardest thing to do is just to get started. Uh, and traveling, man, we did a lot of traveling this year, hey? Where have we gone to so far? Let's see, we were in Taiwan, Hong Kong, uh, Vegas, uh, Bangkok, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, China, man. What a privilege to be alive. It's crazy, like, coming from the West and, and going to Asia, um, there's always so much culture shock every single time you go. Um, you know, I, I've been to China more than once already, but then you know, I went back to uh, see Chris in Guangzhou and just to look at some business opportunities there. And holy crap, it's so massive um, that you forget how, how big China is and, and how many people are actually occupying one little space. And you know what the really funny thing is, Chris? 
is people drive like crazy, and there's so much honking and. Uh, it pretty much like your honk doesn't even work there anymore because it just people don't even respect the honk anymore. But there are no accents, rarely. Uh, that, that's quite true. Um, you know, as you travel from one country to another country in Asia, they all have like different habits of uh, you know how they operate in life. In Vietnam, you know there there's not many cars on the street. It's mostly like motorcycles. At every, any given moment, you probably see fifty motorcycles on the street. It's pretty amazing. Uh, to be, uh, they're more like scooters. We don't really have too many like motorcycle motorcycles. They're more like scooters, but they're like millions of scooters in Vietnam. Uh, they outnumber cars tremendously here. And crossing the street, it's like playing Fogger. You pretty much have to like walk five steps, stop, let traffic go by, and there's no lights here. It's crazy. You just have to like <laughs> go at your own risk. <laughs> when there's light, you still have to look and like. You know, 360 degrees. Yeah, but anyone that's young, uh, I would say, and I would recommend traveling. Um, you really get to understand uh, empathy for people. You really understand um, how to be grateful for uh, living in you know the West, um, in your know, first world country where you get to pretty much do anything you want at any given time, and. Honestly, some of the best experiences in my life have come from traveling, and it's some of the best ways to spend money. Uh, I could do that, and um, for for reals, you know, like if you guys are not used to traveling, or you like spend all your money in like shopping, you know, buying this and that, that's gonna that's not really gonna buy you a lot of experiences. You know, you'd be wearing like nicer clothes, maybe get a compliment or two, but you know, what is that really gonna do to you? You know, as you like. Interact with like you know newer like uh, maybe even like the person that you would want to marry in the future like how are you gonna shock them how are you, how are you gonna like impress them with with your with your clothes you know it's gonna wear off like she's gonna dump you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and honestly, when you travel, you have such better stories uh, to tell, more experiences. You're way more um, outgoing because it just it just you get to uh, put yourself out there. And it's so fun, especially when you're young. And anyone that's listening to this uh, podcast that's in you know the early twenties uh, and growing, it's you know, if I had one thing that I would you know kind of wish I did differently would would be uh, traveling way more when I was you know nineteen twenty because it's you know the world's always changing and nothing's gonna really last the same as it was um, today. So just you know make a commitment if you're young and you have some time and have a bit of money, go travel, meet people, get out there. Um, you really have a bigger scope of of the world and it makes you a way more interesting person. And uh, I, I think it would also be great if you can actually dedicate, maybe if you're going to be on a trip for seven days, you know, just dedicate one or two days, you know, learning about a culture, learning about what people do and how to make the money and how people get rich in that company. I mean, in that in that country. Yeah, like um, you know, go go find people that are do being successful. If you see someone and on vacation, people are always super nice. If you ask them or like you know, you buy them a drink or take them out to to dinner, you know, they're they're very open to sharing their experiences. Uh, and, and give you some really good insight about you know some things they did in life that made them successful, things that they wish they didn't do, or just you know some good life lessons. Totally. <laughs> um, you know, since we talked about earlier about not having new, uh, you know New Year's resolution, just having epic goals, Chris, what are some of the big lessons you learned this year? In 2015, I have learned that. Um, you know, like to be successful, you really need to have the right support. And by support, I don't mean like just your family and friends, right? You need to have like professional support. You need to have people in the world that maybe that help you work around the clock. And I try to be a lone wolf for like a month or two when I first started my, uh, you know, my new business. And when I started, uh, you know, meeting my business partners, actually I met them online, which is quite strange and then we have built quite uh, quite a bit of trust for each other and that's when I really started to excel in my job right I've learned so much that if I was to do it by, by myself alone it probably took me t- 
you know, like a whole year to learn what I've just learned in like, you know, three months. So leveraging relationships, is, it's key, hey, Chris? Yes. Starting your new business venture? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so just a little background about Chris. Chris and I used to work together. Uh, and Chris, when, you know, when he left, was one of the top uh, closers or the top salespeople in our organization. Uh, and that gave him a lot of confidence to uh, go start his online um, entrepreneurship um, business. And, you know, it, it really changed the way you look on, about life, hey? Uh, yes, I, I to- totally. That, that's more than uh, more than true. Um, you know, I used to work in a science lab. You know, it's nothing to be uh, proud of. Most people would say, "Wow, you must be like really smart." Because are you a scientist? I'm like, no, that's that's not really it, right? I really got like stagnant, just doing the same thing over and over, you know, for like years. And I wasn't in sales. I had no sales background. And what I was able to achieve, you know, in the sales industry really helped me to uh, push my boundaries in life, you know, knowing that I could do, I could go from zero to, to, to I would say like, I wouldn't say 100, but like I did quite well uh, in my opinion. And that really gave me a lot of uh, confidence to, to start uh, something from the scratch. Yeah, honestly, sales is one of the best skills or learned skills to have and People always think that it's, you know, I can't do it or I'm not a born salesperson, but it's a learned skill trait. It's a, it's something you develop. Uh, and once you actually master the, the skill of selling, it's going to like enrich your life so much more in relationships, in your uh, personal business, your love life, um, how you are when you just communicate to others, when you first meet them. Um, it just makes you a all around more interesting person. Also the stories and experiences that you've, get from dealing with uh you know a lot of different people it's just like traveling you know like there there are like a few different ways for you to grow right you can read books you can you know go travel you can meet like you know like different people and i think from meeting different people like that that's where i got the most like uh intel about businesses and about just in general how people enjoy their their lives yeah it's so true um you know, I I don't think sales is is you know sales doesn't make you money. I think learning to close makes you money. You gotta go for the close. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know some of the lessons I learned in 2015 were you gotta really enjoy any, everything you do. Um, you know, if it's gonna be something you don't look forward to, uh, and, and you focus on that negative negative thought, it's just gonna make it way more dreadful than it has to be but if you look at it with a positive light and and see what you can really learn from that activity or that outcome it's going to make everything way more enjoyable um and it it really is up to you how how you view things right you you can you can get a parking ticket and you can spend all day or all week you know thinking about how shitty it is or you can just pay the ticket move on and enjoy your life you know it's absolutely um you know critical for you to to say positive and one thing that would really help is actually surrounding yourself with, you know, positive people. And just being around dad all the time, you know, you can really feel that his, uh, his positivity is, is contagious. You know, it makes your, your day better. And in turn, you can pay it forward, you know, and make someone else's day better. Yeah, and if you're a person that always has a frown, um, don't, t- don't take this the wrong way, but no one gives a fuck why you're upset. Honestly, um, people don't care why other people are upset. It's better to just stay positive because more people are gonna enjoy your company. Um, if you're that person in your group or in your family that's always negative and always that that person that doesn't want to do this activity or always has something to say or always has has the last word, realistically, um, over time you're gonna have less and less people to talk to because no one likes to be around negative people. And it's also not good to build a bond, you know based on negativity, you know, because if things change, the bond can very easily break. And you don't want to be, like, negative, like, for the rest of your life. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's just a, it's a choice that you make. Um, and I, I think a second thing that I really learned is put yourself out there. Um, you know, more opportunities actually come your way when you just say yes to more things. Um, if someone asks you to go for dinner, say yes. If someone asks you to go do a... Uh, a, you know, a birthday or a networking event, say yes. 
it's you're gonna learn more or you're gonna meet more people than you would if you stayed at home because you meet zero people when you stay at home. That's totally true. Actually, uh, dad and I, when we got to Bangkok, it was one of the last days here. We're like super tired. We like went to three conferences and then every single day we had to go network at the, at the end of the day. And it was the last day in Bangkok and we decided that we still want to check out this uh, this event, you know, no matter how tired we were. We were. And, uh, you know, sure enough, we met some really, like, amazing people, and uh, we actually built some network, and when we get back to Vancouver, we're going to have some, uh, you know, we're going to set up some meetings with them, and, and let's see where that goes. Yeah, just more opportunities come your way. Um, honestly, smile more. People, regardless of how, uh, how the bad or how good the day is, when you smile, you, you're just more attractive, and, and you just attract more things into your life. And people can really feel the energy. Um, anytime you walk into a, a elevator, for example, smile and say hi and ask people how they're doing because no one ever talks in an elevator. Trust me. I work in a corporate office, and every single time I go up and down, I'm the only person that says, what's going on, people? And people actually respond to it, and, and you're actually the person that sparks conversation. And if you're a person that uh, can always spark conversation, it's going to lead you into more opportunities, especially networking-wise. That's true. Luck doesn't really come as a coincidence. You really got to put in the activities. Yeah, you have to show up to get lucky. Uh, this is one of the best lessons I learned. Ask more, get more. It works in all facets of your life. You know, if you ask for a better deal, at the, at, let's just say uh, at the restaurant or at like a, uh, when you go shopping, you know, most of the time, especially in Asia, it, it works. You get a better deal. Um, if you ask for more phone numbers from ladies or if you know your your girl listen to this and you ask for more opportunities with your guy it's going to it's going to work ask more get more because the, if you don't ask you're never going to get it it's kind of like that saying from uh, Wayne Gretzky you know you miss 99% of the shots you don't take so just go ask for it and trust me it works yes ask for it but don't forget that you in order for people to appreciate you you have to provide values so Always think in terms of how you can benefit others, and uh, you you definitely receive more in uh, return. Yeah, it's so true. Like you know, add value into someone's life, uh, others' life. You know, either some something in terms of uh, a skill you can give them, or insight, or um, some type of experience you can share on them. Yeah, be be a person. You know, give more, get more. All right. Uh, and one of the biggest things also, guys, do not take things personal. Uh, that's one of the biggest things. If you don't get a job that you applied for or, you know, things didn't work out at this moment, don't take it personal. Um, you know, it's just a small delay. That's the biggest thing. Like, I think um, as you grow and as you age, you, you take less and less things personal uh, because it, it really doesn't, like, destroy the rest of your, your day or your life. If, if you don't get that one job or you don't get that girl's phone number or you don't get, you know, whatever it is that you were hoping for, right at this moment, I think um, people are so conditioned to get everything right now. And honestly, just make adjustments to it. If, if something doesn't go your way right now, don't take it personal. Just uh, adjust, create a, a, a plan and, and follow the plan. And everything always works out. Exactly. Uh, you want to use that as an opportuni- opportunity to uh, reevaluate your actions. And, uh, you know, if, if you're doing one thing and it doesn't get you, you know, what you want, then um, maybe it's because you're not doing the right thing. Yeah. And, and all, sometimes it's, it may be for the better. Sometimes there's, uh, there's that saying, it's a blessing in disguise. You know, a, a lot of times people kind of get so caught up, but then, like, a, as they, they learn and as, you know, time goes by, and they reflect back, sometimes it's a huge blessing in disguise, especially uh, in some type of relationships. If, if, you know, someone breaks up with you, for example, and you think life is over, um, you might meet someone better that's more suited for you um, because, honestly, the best is always yet to come afterwards. Yeah, let's just say a girl breaks up with you, and uh, you got to think of the reasons why, you know, a girl is not valuing your, your companionship, right? Maybe you're not smart enough Maybe you don't work hard enough. You don't make her feel secure. You don't take care of yourself. And just see it as an opportunity for you to, to get better. Yeah, it's all about like growth. Every single day, it's an opportunity to, to grow. And, yeah, and to live at the highest level, it's, it's all about creating the reality you want. 
you know, go out there, explore the world, try new businesses, try new jobs, get, get into sales. One of the biggest things I can recommend because it is honestly a life skill to have. Door to door sales is what they say about door to door sales. If you're in it for um, a one year, it's equivalent to four years of communications, like uh, getting a degree in communications. Yeah, and the, one of the best skills to have is is communicating, um, because that's how you really sell your thoughts, uh, that's how you sell your ideas, and that's how you really sell yourself. Uh, 2016 is just all about you know being being the you you want. All you have to do is decide, write that you know write the characteristics of what that person you want to be is like, and act like that. And sooner or later, you will become that person. And don't forget to stop making excuses for yourself. Yeah, don't be a little bitch. That, that's the biggest one. If you're making excuses, that's because you're a little bitch. And everyone is going to think you're a little bitch too. Uh, but it's more about yourself. Like, don't care what other people think. It's the biggest thing is for you to, you know, to hold yourself accountable. Um, rules to go by for 2016, guys. The six rules are the same. One, don't panic. Think positive and be objective and don't think negative. Um, I think so many people just automatically panic uh, and they go into negativity mode, um, but that doesn't really get you anywhere. It doesn't change the situation, the circumstance, or the outcome, right? Just think positive, be objective, change whatever it is that's causing you to uh, have unpleasantry and, and make those right adjustments. Uh, rule number two, walk fast. That simply means be busy. Be so busy that you don't have time for bullshit, no time for drama, no time for gossip, no time for watching TV. Um, I think people have way too much time for on their hands that they waste just uh, not living life. They kind of like live life on the TV where they, actually, they can actually go out there and explore life. So walk fast. Um, do the right thing always. Uh, there's no biases in life. Um, the truth always comes out. The longer you delay it, the longer it might last, but... The fundamental rule of life is the truth eventually comes out. Uh, four is a great one. Never give up. Take things one day at a time. Um, don't look too far into the future. Enjoy the present moment and, and, and work your ass off. Right? And don't give up. Um, rule number five, be grateful. Uh, life is amazing. You just have to realize it. Um, the majority of us get to choose what we want to do, uh, act how we want, be in a safe environment, um, be in an, a position that you can wake up and and go online and, and read things and, and educate yourself. Uh, one of the biggest things that I really uh, am grateful for is not having a, a censorship um, online. Um, when I was in China with Chris, um, there is so much censorship and they block everything from you. So... We have an opportunity to really educate ourselves and to have access to information, which is something to be grateful for in itself. And you really, you really don't understand how great that is until you actually lose it. Um, and rule number six is one of the most important rules is know how to penetrate. Uh, and that simply means finish what you start. Don't be a person that just goes 90% of the way. Um, there's that saying that you're, you're like three feet away from gold. So really finish what you start regardless of, of what it is um, and, and be that person. Just when you decide to do something, just finish it. Don't be one of those guys that or girls that just go and be a, 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 a professional starter. There are a lot of those type of people, eh, Chris? Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot of those around me. I, oh, I'm going to start this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to take this class, that class, and they don't ever end up doing anything. Um, yeah, so those are, are the fundamental six rules of for me um, that I can share with you guys. Those are like really good rules. Um, I, I try to live by. Um, actually, you know, let's forget what I just said. Fuck trying, just do it. And uh, you know, and and Chris just got a lot of words. Just got a little tired. <laughs> Getting old, <laughs> uh, guys. Um, this is the last podcast of 2015. I want to thank every single person that uh, has listened to the first six episodes in 2016. Things are going to get even bigger, 
Um, my goal is to do an episode every two weeks. Um, so it, it's going to be good. It's going to be a fantastic year. I have a safe uh, New Year's Eve and, you know, fuck New Year's resolutions. Just have epic goals and I really share them, you know, put them out there into the universe and, and, and go after it. 2016 is going to be going after what you want in life. And uh, let's live at the highest level because there's no other way to live and it's the most exciting way to live. Happy New Year. Thanks again for tuning in to Living at the Highest Level. We'll see you next week. Uh-huh.